Meet Pradeep Hirani, the founder of Kimaya Fashion. Started in 2002, Kimaya is a retail aggregator of fashion designer wear, bringing edited collections from different fashion houses under one roof. With 16 stores in total, Kimaya has established itself in the designer fashion industry, collaborating with 180 Indian designers from the likes of Tarun Tahiliani and Manish Malhotra to Rana Gill. In July 2011, private equity investors Franklin Templeton acquired a 20% stake in the company for 60 crore rupees, valuing the company at 300 crore rupees. With an average ticket size of 27,000 rupees, Kimaya caters to the super premium. And so Pradeep Hirani moved on to create a more affordable chain of clothing under the brand name Karmic to reach out for larger volumes. In an interview with VC Circle, Pradeep Hirani reflects on how the designer wear industry has changed and his ambitions for the future. Kimaya means magic in okay. Pushtu. Okay. So, uh, because what is fashion? Fashion changes you, transforms you. It's magic. All right. So instead of calling it Moda, Vogue, ABC, we said we call it Kamaya. Sounds more so you say, exotic, so rolls of the tongue, uh, and it means the same thing. So would you say the magic is not formally established with Kamaya fashion? Well, the fun of the magic is in the transformation, and the transformation has to keep happening. What was your journey like? You started Kamaya fashion now in 2002. Yeah. yeah. So what's the journey like? How did you really come up with this concept, and how did you really sell it to the designers? Okay. Roll back to 2002, uh, when I looked around at the so-called Indian fashion designer wear concept uh, industry, there was no industry. What we found was uh, Indian fashion designers had multi-million dollar valuations but no balance sheets. Okay? There were four or five players at that time in the market and all of those four or five players had two things in common. Okay. Which A, one? They were all five players were all at least 17 years old and in those 17 years they had seen zero growth okay i said this is not happening okay if the business is not scalable i will not go to it but if i go or if i go to it i will make sure it's scalable okay so yes i can proudly say that we brought in scale to the industry we brought in a sense of discipline in the industry our systems our processes were what were i mean just in a, imagine a third year itself we got iso 9001 Okay. Certified so and so so and so forth, which till today nobody else in the industry has or even is thinking of getting. Right. So for us, the thing lies in the details. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so the thing I want to focus now really is uh, what is that business model? You clearly sold this business model to a bunch of designers. What was it? What is that business model? How did it sell? You divide the business into two parts. The designer takes care of creativity. Okay. We take care of marketing, logistics, operations. We take care of the retail end, let them take care of the backend. Okay. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. So we give the designer a mood board, a theme to work on. We give them what a client, because one man's food is other man's poison, so what a client in Bangalore wants and what a client in Ludhiana wants is, is two different worlds. So we give him a line of thought, a brief. He creates, he, she creates collection based on those and we buy them from him okay and that's what we offer to the client so proposition to a client right. is that under one roof you get edited collections of the top designers of the country okay you signed on board 180 designers yeah, yeah. so how do you really uh, how do you really share their news between the designers because one designer like Tarun Tehriyani must be really on the top of the scale while another must be on the bottom so how do you really uh, control that process, how do we break up revenues, how do you share revenues with a designer? No, there is no, no fixed rule and there is no sharing of revenues with the designer. When we buy the stuff, we sell it at our prices. Unless the same stuff is also sold in the designer store or the other stores, then the MRP is constant. Okay. And the, the proportion may vary from designer to designer or from a designer's collection to another, another of his collection whatever, or from location to location, it could vary. So there is no fixed formula for this. Mm -hmm. uh, the client is, is king and okay. she decides. How many stores you have today and what would you like to see the store, okay. number of stores? Today our store count is 16. Okay. Uh, our uh, rate of growth has been an average of 39% year on year. Okay. Our top line, bottom lines have grown at an average rate of 39% okay. for the past 9 years. All right. 
variation. Now you also had another brand called Carmack here. Just give us some ideas what Carmack is really and what you try, what do you, what is your objective with Carmack? Okay. Okay, the size of the couture market has its limitations. It's it's not it's it's a couture market is like a banyan tree. It takes its own sweet time, but when it is entrenched, it's entrenched. But it takes a banyan tree takes hundreds of years to to really be what it is today. Yeah. So uh, currently, India is going at a faster pace, and uh, couture can sell well in Bombay, Delhi, maybe the metros. Yes. But India is no longer just two cities. Five years back, we had only two cities in this country to talk about Bombay and Delhi. Yeah. Today we have 60, okay. 70. Okay. And the acceleration in those cities is faster than Bombay and Delhi. Okay. And they need to be serviced. They need, they're, they're trying out to be serviced. Uh, two years back, we commissioned a uh, search agency, a uh, uh, consultancy agency, to do a proper survey for us. And as per the survey, what was found was that the most powerful consumer in this country, mm. the woman, okay, okay. what are her options? Mm. In, in clothing, okay. Okay, she either wears western wear or Indian wear. Okay. Compared to a man who is mm. 99% wears western wear, okay. and shirts and trousers and, and wears 1% kurtas and this. But a okay. woman still wears sarees and salwar kameezes and yeah. things. Indian wear forms 72.3% of her wardrobe in value terms. This is part of a proper study done on over 400-500 women's wardrobes. Mm -hmm. So 72.3% of it is Indian wear today. Okay. And where, where does she buy it from? All right. Okay. What are her options? Mm -hmm. So we we checked her options. Options are there are some six or seven brands mm -hmm. in the in the salwar kameez, Indian wear, ethnic wear things which are national. Okay. And their average MRP is 1245 rupees. This is what they derive from all the balance sheets all right. and all that. Mm -hmm. Now the man in her life spends two thousand on his shirt and two thousand on his trousers. Okay. And you call her the most powerful consumer. Mm. Okay. So okay. if she wants to spend more than twelve forty-five, then she has the uh, her only option is to go to the metros, mm -hmm. where a designer wear average cost is twenty-seven thousand eight hundred rupees. Okay. Okay. So between twelve forty-five and twenty-eight thousand mm. is a is a complete world. Okay. So I either give you a choice of a nano. Mm -hmm. Or buy a Phantom. Okay. I'm so not giving choice in between. Okay. Will you graduate to a to a to a Phantom straight from a Nano? Okay. May not. Hmm. Okay. My first car was a Maruti Eight Hundred, but okay. to get here, I went through all the Fords and the and the Hyundai's and the and the Mahindras and 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 whatever Toyotas and Hondas and whatever yeah. to go there. You need that ladder. Okay. The ladder does not exist today. So as per the study by this consulting agency, we were. It came out that we have to make not just a ladder, but we have to make a platform. Mm. It's such a wide gap that you can make a platform where people can stay. Okay. Okay. So this is the focus of Karmic. So now in Karmic, it's a license model. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there is an issue of a supply chain there. Yeah. Give us an idea of how, if you bring in funding or if you employ funds there, how will that really change? Okay. How will the supply chain? Okay. Our proposition to a client is that we give designer wear at, at stupid prices, okay. okay. And to get those stupid prices, we have to do some non-stupid things. Okay. That is to bring in that scale. Only only with that scale can we bring the price down. Okay. Okay. So this is a 60 store model. To do to to take care of the logistics and operations of 60 stores, we need to put the back end in place. Okay. The back end is is, is where the money actually goes. All right. Okay. What we are doing is. A designer has two assets and one liabilities. Mm -hmm. Normally, the assets are uh, create, uh, brand name one and creativity two. Okay. We only take care of those two things. We only absorb those two. The liability at times may be uh, to deliver huge numbers at fabulous prices. Okay. Is because their orders are high. They're not used to. They're rather focused on couture. So this is also a barrier to entry why, as to why a designer cannot do what you're doing. Absolutely. A designer has got only creativity and. And uh, a brand name, but okay. the liability is something that you take care of. Yes, we do. We do because okay. that's the only thing that we do. All right. You're now very India focused. You've got 15 stores in India and one in Dubai. That's right. Is there a market for this globally? Are you present right now in the United States and Mexico? No. We had signed a location in in the US years back in 2008, but uh, thanks to the recession that came in, we wisely. Decided not to go ahead with it, and uh, currently we are focusing on India. Okay, 
today also we in spite of what is happening politically and otherwise we also believe that you can't go wrong with india try your best okay, okay these bad times will go yeah uh, so we are we are india focused having said that we are not just india focused we are indian subcontinent focused okay because these are the same clothes that are worn in karachi and lahore and dhaka and our stores are going to follow in karachi lahore dhaka all of us we okay. are also in the process of signing three pakistani designers oh, because it's okay. a license model there's no import there's no no nothing it's All an right. ipr transfer okay so uh, what we are we signing three more pakistani designers in january to okay. to do this thing and the same stuff we will reciprocate it fti and retail yeah. is now been announced yeah yeah kimaya comes under fti and yes it does what are you looking to get in funding or are you looking to get in a partner not currently not currently right now no but yes uh, you know the we have franklin templeton and as a private equity they will have to one day exit because okay. of the nature of private equity yeah. so yes uh, we will we will we will look we will have to carry the journey later right. so they might have to pass the baton okay or or whatever that time will say okay. but yes uh, looking at the scale that is required looking at the potential that is there in this country there's we have miles to go all right pradeep my final question to you today is as an entrepreneur and as someone who has created a first mover advantage in this space what is your end goal and what is your end objective for kimaya fashion i uh, i want to have 3 and a half to 4% i of every woman's wardrobe in this country All right. On that note, Pradeep Ram, thank you for thank talking you. to me. It's a good feeling. My pleasure. Thank you.